So this takes place this past Halloween, when it was my first semester in college. I'm a female freshman. It was Halloween, and while my amazing roommate was getting drunk and partying with my ex-friends for the hundredth time, so I was alone and bored in my dorm room. Granted, I didn't want to risk the chance of COVID, but I couldn't stand being in that damn room any longer. Fuck it, I wanted to party. So I started looking around on my phone. I forgot how exactly I came across her, but a girl who was a self-proclaimed freshman invited a group of 10 people to this party her friends were throwing. Socially distanced and everything, she promised us. Luckily, my couple friend wanted to jump on this party, granted that we social distance and wear our mask. The girl sent us the address, told us to tell the people there Monica invited us. Well, that's where things got weird. One of my ex-friends decided to fuck it. Let's not wait any longer for us to get ready. Granted that I was still putting on my makeup and went to the party himself. When he got there, he did exactly as this Monica said, and the guy there refused to let him in and called him a slur. Now this ex-friend was a little weird, so we thought, hey, what the heck, we'll just leave if we send something is off. After driving there in my friend Steve's car, my friend and I, Mary, got out of the back seats and were instantly dumbfounded. Like, we weren't certainly expecting a castle or anything, but this place is a literal dump and the neighborhood was extremely dirty and dark. Well, even though we got the creeps from the place, we did just spend 30 minutes getting there, so fuck it. We walked to the door and this guy who was absolutely plastered and at least on three different drugs answers. We tell them, Oh, we're Monica's friends. Confused, he looks at Mary and I and just silently nods and opens the door for us to come in, ignoring Steve completely. Well, what meet us was certainly not we expect. There was around 20 frat guys huddled around a table filled with booze and drugs silently watching a girl. Well, the only female there, mind you, giving a guy a lap dance. No mask, no nothing. We were the only ones wearing them. Confused and horrified, we silently head down a huge black staircase that was smack dab in the middle of the cramped living room. What greeted us was not another group of people or Monica and her friends that supposedly invited us there. Instead, I kid you not, at least eight black locked doors or more that looked like they came out of a Saw movie greeted us. After trying one of the doors, Steve looked on in horror as the adjacent door slowly opened. What looked like two at least middle-aged greasy men came crawling out, looking at Mary and I in a weirdly perverted way. Unlocking and entering one of the numerous doors, we could only watch in horror as another bouncer-looking man came out of nowhere and started screaming at Steve. Who the hell invited you guys here? Uh, Monica. We all reply, really confused. The dude, just looking bemused, just goes, Who the fuck is Monica? We take that as our cue to leave and we hardly run up fast enough before the bouncer starts to shove and tries to tackle Steve towards the ground. Leaving that crackhead house, confused as fuck, we finally see Monica and two other scandalously clothed girls, literally looking as white as a sheet. She gives a small awkward giggle and wave, and we floor the hell out of there, never looking back. Yep. Don't go to random parties in large cities that you're unfamiliar with. The weird part, or really not so weird part, was that Monica was trying to get me to come alone, knowing that I was female. In all honesty, I think the people at the party and Monica 
really only had a problem with Steve and totally did not expect Mary to bring her boyfriend or for me to come with friends. Afterwards, Steve told us that he totally believed it was either a drug house or a prostitution ring that had tried luring Mary and I in. This is quite possibly the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Early 2000s, I was in my late teens and was on my way to meet up with a co-worker, Chris, to watch a movie at his apartment. I had been to his apartment once before. It was one of those huge apartment complexes where every single building looks the same. It was set out in a big rectangle with a field up against it meaning there really wasn't any way to differentiate the buildings, except for the numbers on them that were only visible during the day. I remember that the last time I had been there, I had parked next to a huge boat. So I looked for the huge boat and parked by it again. I texted him to let him know I'm on my way up, then went up to the second floor, didn't bother checking the apartment number, and banged on the door really hard, yelling, Open up! in a deep voice. Cringe. I was trying to be funny. The door cracked open and all I saw was half a face peeking out at me. Loud music was thumping and the whole apartment looked dark inside. What do you want? The guy mumbled. I never even considered that this was the wrong apartment. But I knew Chris had a roommate and I hadn't met the guy yet, so... Derp. I thought this was his roommate. Uh, I'm here for Chris? I said. Who? The guy asked. And then the door opened all the way. And another guy grabbed my arm. He's right back here. He said and pulled me into the apartment. The music was really loud and the whole place smelled... The lights were out, with a few strobe lights blinking here and there. I just remember thinking, this doesn't look like his apartment. Did he move some furniture around? The guy who had pulled me into the apartment wouldn't let go of my arm, and he began pulling me toward the back. He grabbed a cup and tried to give it to me, but I wouldn't take it. The place was packed, and everywhere I looked, People were either shooting up or lighting up or snorting up. I was pretty sheltered at the time, so it felt like walking into a movie set. It just didn't feel real. When we passed the first bedroom, one of the rooms, I saw a group of people sitting around a black light doing God knows what. Writhing around, dancing. But I smelled blood at that point. The guy was still trying to drag me to what I assume was the back bedroom and that's when it hit me. This is the wrong apartment. I'm exceptionally slow-witted it appears. I pulled my arm out of the guy's grasp but had no idea what to do. I knew if I panicked, bad things would definitely happen. In a split second decision, I did what I do best. Acted dumb. Oh goodness, you know what? This is the wrong apartment, I said in my most cheerful voice. I started to leave, but the guy kept pulling me back. It's cool, was all he would say. Stay. I kept pulling myself away, telling him I had a friend waiting for me. I'm so sorry to have bothered him. It looks like a great party, but I had to go. I tried to keep it lighthearted and not, you know vomit on myself in a panic. My phone started buzzing in my hand, and when that happened, he started to try to grab it from me, all the while telling me to stay. You're here. Now have a good time. He said, trying to pry my phone out of my death grip. The scary thing about it was that he didn't yell. He didn't speak aggressively at all. Though his actions were terrifying, I finally made it to the door and managed to open it. He gave up, but another guy stepped out and followed me. 
When I tried to go down the stairs, he blocked the way. Why you gotta be rude? He was slurring and weaving around. Obviously hammered. I apologized and said I had to go. My friend was waiting for me. I held up my buzzing phone to show him. It was then that I noticed blood dripping onto the ground in front of him. When I looked to see where it was coming from, I saw they had blood-soaked paper towels wrapped around his hand. What happened? I don't know why I kept this conversation going. I just wanted out. I'm an idiot. He just shrugged and held up his bloody hand and said in the most nonchalant voice I've ever heard, Got shot. Why don't you go to the hospital? I asked and immediately regretted it. Because he looked at me like I was stupid. Which, in fairness, he wasn't wrong. Give me your number. You can come over here next time. He pulled his phone out of his pocket. I thought about giving him a fake one, but I wasn't about to push my luck. As soon as he got the digits, he called to make sure my phone would ring. He was satisfied when he saw it ring, and only then did he let me go down the stairs. I fled to my truck, shaking. After a few moments, I called Chris and asked him where his apartment was. When he told me, I looked at the buildings and could just make out that I was one building off. I had the floor and apartment location, right? Just not the building. I made it up to his apartment, looking behind me the whole time, and told him what happened. At that point, I was trying not to get weepy. He helped a lot because when I finished telling him what had happened, he laughed at me. That was stupid. Which it was, but at the time, it just made me mad. So I went home in a huff. We didn't hang out much after that. I know I keep throwing in there how stupid I was. I can't emphasize this enough. This was completely my fault for not being aware. It could have been completely avoided had I just used my brain. It was sheer luck that something worse didn't happen that night. The guy did call me several times, and I never answered. He gave up after a while, but I changed my number just to be safe. Never saw him again. Hope he eventually got medical attention. I'm your average white girl with light brown hair, sun-kissed skin, and mesmerizing blue eyes, as what they say. I was pretty much an ugly duckling growing up until I turned 16 and started working as a cashier. Honestly, it wouldn't have been as bad if I actually worked in the town that I lived in, but I decided to work in a nearby city as I lived between said town and city. I remember the few times I was hit on when I was 16, which were thrilling for me as no one had before. But the more I worked, the more I realized where I was working. I was the odd one. The demographic where I work is predominantly Hispanic. I work with a large language barrier and heavy on cash and EBT transactions. I would always find myself so jealous of girls that I worked with as they were better than me in many ways that I am not. They were bilingual, slim, thick, and short. I wouldn't say I was the only white girl there, but as time moved forward, the only girls who were hit on by the most were pale with colored eyes, regardless of Hispanic or white. Honestly, thinking of it right now, there are probably three young white girls in a service department of 130. Now that I have worked there for three years, it doesn't seem different for me anymore, and I feel like anyone else. Now that the logistics are out of the way, let me tell you about Michael. I have seen him a few handful of times throughout my time working at my store. I don't particularly care for customers, but this one really stuck out and snuck up on me at the same time. 
Michael is basically your Hispanic cowboy, the shoes, hat, clothes, and belt of guy who drives a low-riding truck. I work self-checkout majority of the time, especially in the last year, so I usually have plenty of regulars that I spot, but this one always gave me the weirdest gut feeling. I hate to say this, but I would always judge him in my head. A smile on the outside but a secret ridicule in my head. He always comes around 4 to 5 p.m., around rush hour, always buys one or two items, then comes up to me, looks me straight in the eyes and smiles. This was pre-COVID, but even since the masks have been implemented, the smiling was always there, lingering in the strangest way. I didn't judge him because of the creepy stares, but off the way he looked. Most guys around the city either dress up really nice or not at all. Seeing this man every day in a different outfit wasn't the problem. It was the obesity. His pants never fit right. Some of his shirts were barely hanging on due to the fat rolling out and his belt was probably ripping. It's as if he wore the same clothes he wore since he was 16 but food got to him as he got older which now he looks around 24 to 25. I've seen him more frequently since the new year, and I always have greeted him and said goodbye. But it's not special treatment, but my job. I've gone through so many guys who have had the balls to ask me out due to a nice hello or a subtle eye squint, but I have a boyfriend, and I have had for the last year. I usually like to keep personal and professional separate, so most people don't know much about me in general, so I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Michael or any other guy had asked any co-worker of mine if I had one, and pretty sure the answer would be, um, I don't think so. Recently, however, I have gotten an influx of comments from Michael in the recent weeks, Instead of smiling or staring into my soul, it would be, Miss Ray, then he would tilt his head, or, Have a good day, Ray. When I didn't even know his name, I would just squint my eyes and move on to the rest of my day. It's not that I am shaming for him trying to be a nice person towards me, but the gut feeling always stuck out for me, always lingering in the back of my mind that he is not a good person. I learned two weeks back that he became friends with another co-worker of mine. They would talk for a few minutes when they saw each other, but in the past week, the conversation had apparently only been about me. My co-worker took note of this and told me out of the kindness of his heart, or probably what was on his mind when he saw me. Who knows? The question Michael would ask were if I was single, how old am I, how long I've worked there, where I went to school, if I am in school, what do I like to eat, and etc. I'm pretty sure all the answers were inconclusive. I took note of this in my head, but told my co-worker that he gives me creepy vibes, and he is busted as a joke, and we both laughed, and I went along with my day as if nothing happened. Then this past week started, on Monday, after I had left for the day before his usual time he came in. Michael asked a manager and then a female co-worker of mine if I was there and he wanted to give me a cake. The next day I worked, I was really confused and just thought it was funny at first, until he came in and gave me a cake. It was choco flan. He told me to eat it, said it was his birthday cake, and wanted me to have it, then left without another word. I had no idea it was that guy until he was him. I had quickly asked his name, which he responded to, with Michael, and that's where things got weird. I was contemplating if I should eat it, but ultimately decided against it as it was someone I have never really spoke to, someone I had a strange gut feeling about, and something that recently started asking questions about me. Plus, we were in a pandemic. So I threw it away for hours later. I was off for two days after that, 
Until this past Friday happened, Michael came in, and I was already weary of it all. He came up to me asking if I enjoyed the cake, which I lied, saying it was great, then tried to leave the convo, until he lightly grazed my arm and said, Miss Ray, here's my number. Text me if you want. Then he placed it in my hand, and written on there was Michael and a number. Then he walked away without another word. I stood there for a second, while a manager and co-worker just glanced at me and then carried on their conversation like nothing happened. But my discomfort stood on my face, yelling at the top of its lungs. I remember swallowing and picking it up, then placing it in my jacket pocket as if it was for safekeeping, but it was definitely not. I wish I wasn't the way I am sometimes, but I told the manager and two co-workers about it later on, which they all said was weird, but the manager said to make him pay me money to talk to me. All of the discomfort washed away after that. Like, what's the worst he could do now? Bad mistake. For thinking that he couldn't do anything else other than look into my soul after I don't text his number. I didn't see him the next day, or at least we didn't see each other. I honestly forgot about the incident. I had told my boyfriend about the cake part, but never the number part because I knew he would become frustrated that I never stopped it from getting to that point. But how else was I supposed to reject a guy who walks away from a word I say? Michael comes in to say what he says, then walks away majority of the time before I can put a word in. But today was the worst. After every interaction I've had at my work, this one really messes with my head, especially since this is still something that I will be dealing with tomorrow and however long he continues this. I was on my lunch break in my car. I'm quite parked out, so no customers can see me, but at the same time, no one drives or parks near me in general. I like to be away from vehicles. I was simply watching TikTok when in the corner of my eye, I saw Michael walking inside. I waited a minute before I pulled out of my phone and started recording me talking about the situation on a private TikTok video that I'll never post, but something to look back on. I was describing the situation when I noticed him come back from the store completely empty-handed. I saw him glance in my direction but I just shoved my head down so he wouldn't see me. And at first, I don't think he did. I looked over and saw him getting in his truck, or at least standing by it, and he was over in the next row of parking spots for me, so a good 60 to 80 feet away. I just stopped the video when I saw him at his truck and I was talking in my camera front-facing. I saw him go to his driver's side and look over at my car again when I put my sun visor up to block my head from his view. My lunch was quickly coming to an end when I noticed him still standing outside his truck, but I just waited for him to leave, but he never did. I saw him take off his jacket, then put it back on from his chest down as I was blocking off the view of his face so he wouldn't see mine. Then he started walking towards my car. At first, I wasn't sure what to do, but I just sat there and breathed. What's the worst that could happen, right? I remember getting nervous and thought about driving off, but I realized it would have been mean and indecent. But I was scared shitless. I'm not going to lie. Every possibility flooded my mind until he came up to my car and tapped in my window. It sounded inhumane at first, almost like a screeching tap when I noticed he tapped on my window with a pocket knife. I pretended to not notice and continued on my TikTok videos that I wanted to watch and I just wanted him to go away. And I started shaking uncontrollably. I couldn't even swallow my spit. Michael went over to my passenger side from around the back and started to wave at me and smile at me, trying to talk to me. I didn't see the knife at that time, but then he tried to open my door. 
He pulled at the handle, but I remembered to lock my doors when I'm in my car just in case. He walked around back to my driver's side and knocked on my window again, asking if I was all right, how have I been, if I'm okay, and why haven't I texted him. I just smiled and looked shocked. My gut feeling was right, and it was the most scariest and unpleasant thing that I have ever experienced. He walked around my car again, and honestly, was there for a good minute or two, looking at my car, until he waved goodbye and walked away and told me, Have a good day, Miss Ray. After he walked away, I quickly caught a video of him walking away, then I turned off my phone and just glanced in realizations and what ifs. What if I didn't lock my door? What if I... And I was shaking. I couldn't think or breathe. I was contemplating what to do. Should I leave my car? I needed to go back to work. I just wanted peace and quiet and I get this instead. I glanced over and see him get in his truck. Wait a few minutes, then drive off. I didn't get a clear view of his license plates, but I still got a letter or two plus the make and model. The very action of this happening in the middle of my shift was quite unsettling as he could come in here at any moment and plus, he knows what my car looks like. A moment or two after I saw his truck leave my work parking lot, I got out, went inside, clocked in and told the manager. No one who has HR capabilities, but someone who is resourceful in pressing matters. I told her the situation and how I was super uncomfortable about what happened, but her response was just plain awful. Telling me that he is harmless and I'm probably making it up, I literally was shaking so bad that I couldn't even speak half of the words I said. You know that feeling of being in Walmart at 11pm high on sugar and super tired and your world feels big and your eyes feel wide? That's what it felt like for me for a good hour, of course, in the middle of a rush. I had to forget about that instance for a second, but it lingered in the back of my mind. I told another manager, but she victim blamed me too, saying I probably led him on. But she said it was weird since I probably did just say hi and he thought it was flirting and how he came up to my car, but it was disregarded. I just didn't speak to her or the other girl again. I still haven't told anyone higher up because I don't trust their intentions with pressing matters or issues because I am always the one to be blamed half the time because my contributions to certain situations always instigates it further. And maybe it was the same now. And every time I have an issue with a customer, they never say or do anything unless it happens in front of them. From time to time, I'll have a customer who comes in and stares into my soul next to his girlfriend and child and basically, I fucks me. Other times, I have vendors or other customers who tell me that I am so beautiful that they want to see me naked. And now... I have Michael, who tried to get in my car with a pocket knife in his hand. I'm not here for legal advice, but for the creepiest customer award going to Michael. I will update further with more, but my well-being is fine. I am fine. I'm not scared of it. I'm actually laughing at the whole situation, but maybe that's how I cope with trauma. But this takes the cake. I did learn that his father has been arrested several times but owns a local Mexican restaurant which Michael works at. And this is not the first time he has done stuff like this. According to one of the managers, previously he would come late at night to stalk his ex. It became a problem where the girl would hide every time she saw him but eventually stopped going to the store. I guess now I'm his next target. Yes. If I encounter him again, I will reject him. But Jesus, I don't think I've ever been that scared in my life.
this encounter happened about five years ago during my junior year of college. My first two years of college, I played football for a small liberal arts school. However, I decided to quit the team my junior year. I was still very close friends with many of the guys on the team, so I still lived with a few of my former teammates. As the only non-student athlete in the house, I would always have about three hours alone while they were all off at practice. Most days of the week, I had class late in the day and I would come home to an empty house. One day after class, I was walking down to the end of the main street on campus where my house was. I noticed a man standing in the middle of the street, all alone, holding something above his head. As I got closer, I realized the man was acting very strange. The sign he was holding up was just a torn piece of cardboard with some scribbles written on it. He was holding it high above his head with both arms and seemed to be looking at something up the street, despite there being nothing. He was yelling unintelligible things such as, You think we don't know that you know? And, We're gonna keep coming back. I initially felt a bit sorry for the guy because he was obviously homeless and suffering some sort of mental breakdown. But what happened next made him harder to sympathize with. I was about 40 yards from my front door when he noticed me and turned in my direction. He got right up next to me, shoved the sign in my face while screaming incoherently. I worried he was going to get more physical, so I decided to book it to my front door. Thankfully, I made it to my door and got inside unscathed. I began to chill out in my room and tried to just laugh the whole thing off. As I said before, all my housemates were at football practice, so I knew not to expect anyone home for a few hours. I'm chilling at my desk when I hear the side door open and close. I immediately go into fight or flight mode and decide to barricade myself in my room by pushing my heavy desk in front of my door. I then yelled, Get the fuck out of my house! and called campus security since they could likely arrive before the actual police. I sat there for about 10 minutes clutching a golf club until I got a call from security that they didn't see anyone outside. I told them to come in through the side door, which confirmed my suspicion that it was unlocked. We did a quick walkthrough and found nothing. My guess is the crazy guy opened the door, decided not to come in, then closed it and took off. This happened around 2010. I'm a female, and I was 12 years old. Same with my friend in the story. Let's call her Sarah. Summer of 2010 was great for Sarah and I. We had both gotten new bikes that year, and we spent almost every day biking around our small, yet urban and close to a big city town, like most 12-year-olds were doing at that time. One day, we decided to bike down to a well-known park in our city that has a trail leading down to a ravine that some kids at school were talking about and we wanted to check it out. Sarah and I were biking down the path leading to a secluded ravine. It was the middle of the day and there were many families in the park, so we felt safe and we never had a reason not to. So we get to our destination. The ravine was just a little river surrounded by lots of trees, nothing special. As we were sitting down near the ravine, we were having a conversation that had something to do with fish. I can't remember exactly what it was about, as this was 10 years ago. But just imagine what two 12-year-olds would talk about. Anyway, as we were talking amongst ourselves, this man, probably around 35 years old, comes behind us and just joins our conversation. I immediately got a bad feeling about this guy and I was already thinking of ways to get the fuck out. So he goes on to ask what we were doing down here all alone, acting super creepy, and then he says, Wow, you girls are so beautiful. Who the fuck says that to two preteen girls as a grown man without bad motives? 
I still remember my heart racing because of how scared I was as he was inching towards us. Back then, 12-year-olds didn't really have cell phones, but thank the Lord that my mom gave me hers for that day. I remembered that I had it and pretended that I was getting a call from my mom. I picked up the phone and pretended to talk to her and was telling her exactly where we were. After I hung up, I said something like, Okay, my mom wants me home. We have to go. We ran out of there with our bikes, and it was all steep uphill from there, so we had to walk our bikes up. I was in tears because I was so scared. I had a crazy gut feeling that something really bad was about to happen to us. We looked behind us, and the man was not far behind, still following us. This was when we started sprinting. When we finally made it to the main park where there are a lot of people, we ran into the playground area and sat on a slide. We saw the man hiding behind a tree staring at us, just waiting for us to go somewhere else. Sarah and I probably stayed on that playground for close to an hour, planning what to do next because we both lived separate ways. And yes, he stayed behind that tree the whole time. I'm guessing he thought that we couldn't see him because the tree was on the opposite side of a field. Finally, we decided to make a run for it, or bike I guess. I don't think I've ever gone that fast. Luckily, I was traveling on a busy street. Sarah and I never saw that man again, and we never spoke about this story again because it terrified us to even bring it up. This story chills me to the bone 11 years later thinking about what could have happened to us that day. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I would also like to thank my following patrons, Fire05, Gabriel, Moschino, Ralph, Lori, and Jake. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel further, you can be a patron too. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.